Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we will discuss about headgear in orthodontics in detail. The history of headgears dates back to 1890 when Dr. Edward Engel introduced it. Kingsley, 1892, described the use of headgear to depress and drag the incisor teeth distally extracting the maxillary premolar teeth. In 1892, Kingsley described a technique for driving maxillary teeth distally by means of a headgear without extracting teeth. This headgear consisted of a cloth covering the back and top of head and the pulling force was transmitted by elastics. Basis for Orthopedic Appliances 1. Amount of Force 2. Duration of Force 3. Direction of Force 4. Age of the patient. 5. Timing of force application. Amount of force. Two types of force. 1. Orthodontic, light forces ranging from 50 to 100 grams. 2. Orthopedic, heavy forces, over 400 grams. According to Graeber, 400 grams of interrupted cervical force to all the maxillary teeth exceeds the tooth movement threshold retards the growth of the maxilla. According to Haas, 3 to 5 pounds of cervical force would elicit orthopedic change in the maxilla. High forces produce hyalinization leading undermining resorption which prevents tooth movement thus only orthopedic movement seen. Full Mixed Dentition 250 to 300. Mixed dentition during exfoliation, 150 to 250. Full permanent dentition, 400 to 500. Retention in full permanent dentition, 150 to 400. Duration of force. Intermittent forces produce skeletal changes whereas continuous forces produce dental movement. Extra oral appliances should be worn for about 12 to 14 hours per day to bring the desired effect. Direction of force. The direction of force application should be such as to maximize the skeletal effect. A favorable skeletal effect seen when a force is directed posteriorly and superiorly through the center of resistance of the maxilla. Age of the patient. Orthopedic appliances are most effective during the mixed dentition period. It takes advantage of the prepubertal growth pattern slash spurt. However, treatment should be maintained till growth is completed as these appliances changes only the expression of growth and not the underlying growth pattern, which may later reassert. Timing of force application there is evidence that an increase in the releases of growth hormones occurs during the evening. Therefore, it is advisable to wear headgear in the evening and throughout the night. Appliance use time 12 to 16 hours per day. Anchorage Extraoral Anchorage Cervical, utilizing the nape of the neck. Occipital, utilizing the occipital region. Cranial, involving the cranium. Facial, utilizing the face. Headgear. It is one of the most commonly used extraoral orthopedic appliances. Used during the growth period to intercept or correct certain skeletal malocclusions as well as to distalize the maxillary dentition or maxilla itself. Adjuncts to control or gain anchorage. Uses of headgear. 1. Orthopedic use can be used to hold the maxilla and change the direction of its growth in pre-adolescent patients with skeletal class 2. 350 to 350 grams per side. Worn for 10 to 12 hours a day. 2. Anchorage purpose. Can be used in adults to reinforce anchorage during fixed appliance therapy. Force value. 250 to 350 grams per side for 10 to 12 hours a day. 3. Distalization of maxillary first molar. Can be used to distalize the maxillary first molar. Pure translation can be attained if applied force passes through the CR of the molar. Force applied, 
300 grams per side for 10 to 12 hours a day. 4. Retention Headgears can be used to retain molar corrections achieved through other techniques. 5. Space maintenance and regaining Space regaining following space loss can be accomplished. Can also be used to maintain space after premature loss of deciduous teeth can be used to control all three dimensions, vertical, sagittal, and transverse. 6. Overjet Reduction Asher's face bow can be used to retract upper and lower anterior simultaneously. 7. Intrusion of molars and incisors Intrusion can be achieved using the combination of a high-pull headgear and a maxillary intrusion splint. 8. Expansion and Contraction of the Arch By adjusting the inner bow of the face bow, expansion or contraction can be achieved. 9. Uprighting of Molars Mesially tipped molars can be upright using headgears. Components of Headgear 1. Face Bow 2. Anchorage Source Slash Headgear Strap 3. Force Element Face bow. It is the component that transmits the extraoral forces on to the posterior teeth. The face bow consists of outer bow, inner bow, junction. Outer bow is made of 1.5 mm stiff round wire and is contoured to fit around the face. Inner bow is made of 1.25 mm round SS wire and contoured around the dental arch and molars. 3 to 4 mm away from the teeth. Inserted into the buccal tubes fixed on the maxillary first molars. Stops are placed mesial to the molar tubes. Adjustments to the inner bow can be made to expand or constrict the maxillary arch. If the bow is inserted into one headgear tube, the other bow end should be expanded approximately 5 mm buccal to the opposite tube. This expansion bend is made near the anterior portion of the inner bow. As the patient fully engages the appliance, he must constrict the inner bow slightly. This creates an expansive force on the molars. If maxillary arch expansion is desired and a face bow is being used, a greater amount of expansive force must be built into the inner bow. In this case, the inner bow is expanded more than the typical 5 mm, the retractor will then operate in conjunction with other expansion forces that are used in treatment. Conversely, if the desire is to constrict the maxillary arch, the inner bow will not be expanded, but can be constricted. The junction is rigid joint of inner and outer bow. It is placed at the midline of the bows. When asymmetric forces are needed, the joint can be shifted from the midline. Face bow styles, they could be Clone, further of two types, regular cushion loop J-hook Asher Bite plate Anchorage source headgear strap the appliance takes anchorage from the rigid bones of the skull or from the back of the neck by means of a head cap or neck strap or a combination of the two. The selection of this depends upon the individual patient needs. Selection of headgear type A high pull head cap will place a superior and distal force on the teeth and maxilla. A cervical neck strap will place an inferior and distal force on the teeth and skeletal structures. If both are combined, the force direction can be varied by altering the proportion of the total force provided by each component. If more vertically excessive growth is present, the higher the direction of pull and vice versa, but it must be kept in mind that considerable variation in growth response can occur. Cervical Pull Headgear This extraoral pull is generally applied bilaterally, for three main purposes. 1. As a restraining force. 2. As a retracting force. 3. As a supplementary force. Indications. Short face, class 2 protrusive maxilla. Low mandibular, plain angle, and deep bite. 
Early treatment of class 2 malocclusion as it helps to distalize the maxilla and correct class 2 molar relationship. The change in molar relationship is generally not so much due to the distal force, but to the clockwise moment that very effectively tips the molar crown distally. Outer bow position. The extrusion caused by a cervical pull headgear has a lingual tipping effect on the molars. Disadvantage. Extrusion of molars caused by this appliance is usually undesirable except for cases of short lower facial height. High pull headgear. Derives anchorage from the occipital region, that is back of the head. The position of the head cap results in the production of an intrusive and distalizing effect. Can cause counterclockwise, clockwise and bodily movement of the maxilla depending on the position of the outer face bow. Bodily movement is beneficial in long face high angled class 2 patients where intrusion of maxillary molars is desired. As a growth guidance appliance, a high pull face bow can decrease the vertical development of the maxilla, thereby allowing for auto rotation of the mandibular and maximizing the horizontal expression of mandibular growth. Outer bow position. Combination pull headgear. It causes a distal and slightly superior force on the maxilla and dentition. By varying the proportion of the total force derived from the head cap and the neck strap, the resultant force direction can be altered. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.